Grade 10 physical sciences learners, in this video I'm going to introduce the concept of mechanical energy to you. Let's jump right in, but don't forget to subscribe to my channel for maths and science if you haven't yet. Energy, otherwise known as mechanical energy, is an important physics topic. So physics, remember, is paper one. So it's an important physics topic that forms part of a larger section called mechanics. Now, other sections included in mechanics include the graphs of motion section, equations of motion, learning about displacement, distance, velocity, speed, acceleration, and in grade 11, Newton's laws, and in grade 12, work energy, power, momentum, and all those things. Right, let's jump right into energy. These are the subtopics that will be covered in this playlist. We'll be speaking about what energy is, different types of energy, mechanical energy, and the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. And grade 10s, this last one, actually all of these, are so important that they are tested again in matric, but we don't teach it again to you in matric. So you need to learn this now and keep this knowledge till matric. Now, it's very important to remember that energy is defined as the ability to do work. So when you are doing work, you are exerting energy. You are having the ability to do work. And something that we'll learn a little bit more about in grade 12 is the ability to do work is the ability to exert a certain force that causes an object to move or causes an object to have displacement. But I just want you to keep the following two terms closely connected in your head for me, and that is energy and work. Now, what you need to know in grade 10 is that energy is a scalar quantity. Now, remember vectors versus scalars. Vectors are the ones that need direction. Because energy is a scalar, it does not need a direction in its answer. And just like work, energy is measured in the unit called joule. So, for example, I can say that I did there's 30 joules of energy in order to do a certain task. So, or I can say that object has 30 joules of energy because it's at that certain position. Or because of the motion of that object, it has 30 joules of energy. We'll speak about the different types of energy now, but you need to be familiar with that unit. It's a capital J. Now, mechanical energy is the sum. So sum means plusing together. The sum of gravitational potential energy, which I shortened here to EP, and kinetic energy, which I shortened to EK. When you add these two energies together, you get mechanical energy. But what are these two types of energies? Let's start off with gravitational potential energy, often shortened to potential energy. Now, you can see the potential energy. You can call it EP. Look at how the little P is a baby P. Or some textbooks, some teachers refer to it as U. But either way, the formula is the same. M times G times H. Those three variables are squashed together, meaning multiplication. M multiplied by G multiplied by H. Now, if you read the definition, it'll give you a clue about what these different variables mean. So gravitational potential energy is the energy that an object has because of its position in the gravitational field relative to some reference point. Okay, so let's go through what you guys think the variables means. M means mass and mass in physics, we always measure in kilograms. Then because it's all about position in the gravitational field, we know that G or gravitational acceleration plays a role over here to determine potential energy. G is gravitational acceleration. Remember, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. And what is important to remember is that this is a vector, which means that if you are looking for G, or if you're answering for G in your exam, you need to have a direction. And again, maybe you've forgotten, but on Earth, or maybe you haven't ever learned it, on Earth, on planet Earth where we stay, gravitational acceleration, the average that we take G to be, and this is what we do in your textbooks, in your curriculum, is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. Why? Because gravitational acceleration, the force due to gravity, pulls you downwards towards the center of the earth. And the average value that we take for earth is 9.8. On the moon, it's a different value. On planet Mars, it's a different value. But in these calculations, we're going to use G as 9.8. 
This value is given on your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize it. And then last, but definitely not least, H is height. Height or a distance, and it's relative to some reference point. And this is measured always in meters. I mean, you need to convert if your units are not given in the correct unit. So if mass is given in grams, you must convert to kilograms. You need to convert height to meters. Now, when I say above some reference point, usually we take the ground as a reference point. So imagine this is the ground. The height is measured from the ground up to wherever we are measuring the, the potential energy. That would be your height. So taking a look at the scenario, if this over here is the ground down here, this is my zero reference point. And all of these positions over here, so let's draw different dots along this track, would represent different heights above the ground. I can ask you to work out the potential energy at any of these heights above the ground. So if the car is here versus here versus here, here or here. Think about it. If I asked you to calculate the gravitational potential energy, the mass of the car is going to stay the same. The gravitational um, acceleration will stay the same. We're still on Earth. The height differs. So when the height differs, the potential energy differs. Also, heavier objects, larger mass, will have a greater potential energy at a given height above the ground or above the zero reference position. So let's pretend I give you two individuals and let's say they have an identical mass. We're on Earth. One person is 60 meters above my zero reference or above the ground. My other is 40 meters. And I ask you to compare which one will have a higher potential energy. You're immediately going to say person A. How would you confirm using calculations? Well, if I were to work out the potential energy of person A, let's say both people weigh or have a mass rather of 60 kilograms. Let's do that. So my mass of person A is 60. We're on Earth, so G is 9.8. And the height for person A is 60 meters above the ground. That is the potential energy of person A. You can do the exact same thing for person B. And from there, we can clearly see that the potential energy for A is greater than that of B. Moving on to kinetic energy, that is the energy that an object possesses as a result of its motion. So when you see the word or hear the word kinetic, I need you to think of the word motion. When you think of motion, I need you to think of the following, V, which is speed or velocity. So the two things, the two variables that influence the kinetic energy of an object is the mass of the object, Again, measured in kilograms. In physics, mass is always measured in kilograms. It's in chemistry when we measure mass in grams. And V is speed or velocity measured in meters per second. Now, remember, speed and velocity are very closely related. Speed is a scalar version. There's no direction. Velocity is the vector version. There is a direction. A very basic example, an 80 kilogram person runs at 10 meters per second. They're giving me the speed, the mass calculate their kinetic energy you simply write the formula first you always write your blank formula first then we sub in so 80 for mass and my v my speed is 10 remember to square it please don't forget it so many of my students forget that and that gives us a kinetic energy of 4000 joules now remember the mechanical energy is the sum of the gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy you add the two energies together, get you mechanical. So a basic example would be this one, pause the screen and try it. A 10 kilogram object is traveling 30 meters above sea level and has the following speed, two meters per second. Calculate the object's mechanical energy. Now, on your formula sheets, it will give you this. I expand the formula by writing out the formula for EK and then for EP. And then what I do is I substitute my values in. So my mass is a 10 kilogram object. I was told that it's traveling at a speed of two. So two, don't forget to square it. Then my mass again is 10. We're on earth, so G is 9.8. And I'm 30 meters above sea level. We're assuming that sea level is my reference height or my zero value. You simply add your kinetic energy and your potential energy to get mechanical energy. So my mechanical energy is 2,960 joules. Now, an interesting thing about mechanical energy is that if we're dealing with an isolated system, which we are in grade 10, 11, and 12 physics, that means that the mechanical energy that you calculate at this position, this dot over here, will be the same as the mechanical energy over here and here 
and here and here. And that takes us to the principle of conservation of mechanical energy, which we'll do in another video. Check out the playlist for more videos. And I can't wait to see you in more videos in the future. I hope this one helped. Bye, everyone.